The following article, titled Western Genre, is from Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia, at en.wikipedia.org. The Western is an American genre in literature and film. Westerns are artworks, films, literature, television and radio shows, sculpture, particularly that by Frederick Remington, and paintings, devoted to telling stories set in the American West, and sometimes Mexico, often portraying it in a romanticized light. While the Western has been popular throughout the history of movies, it's begun to diminish in importance as the United States progresses farther away from the period depicted. Section 1. Definition Westerns, by definition, are set in the Western United States, almost always in the 19th century, generally between the 1860s and 1900. Some incorporate the Civil War. Westerns often involve semi-nomadic wanderers, often cowboys, whose sole possessions consisted of clothing, a revolver, and optionally a horse. The technology of the era, such as the telegraph, printing press, and railroad, may appear, usually symbolizing the coming end of the frontier. The Western takes these elements and uses them to tell simple morality tales, usually set against the spectacular scenery of the American West. Westerns often stress the harshness of the wilderness and frequently set the action in a desert-like landscape. Specific settings include lonely isolated forts, ranches, the isolated homestead, the saloon, or the jail. Other iconic elements in Westerns include Stetsons and Spurs, Colt 45s, prostitutes, and the faithful steed. Section 2. Common Themes the Western film genre often portrays the conquest of the wilderness and the subordination of nature in the name of civilization or the confiscation of the territorial rights of the original inhabitants of the frontier. The Western depicts a society organized around codes of honor rather than the law, in which persons have no social order larger than their immediate peers, family, or perhaps themselves alone. In the Western, these themes are forefronted to the extent that the arrival of the law and civilization is often portrayed as regrettable, if inevitable. Section 3. Western Literature Western fiction got its start in the penny dreadfuls, and later the dime novels, that first began to be published in the mid-nineteenth century. These cheap books were published to capitalize on the many fanciful yet supposedly true stories that were being told about mountain men, outlaws, settlers, and lawmen taming the western frontier. By 1900, the new medium of pulp magazines helped to relate these adventures to Easterners. Meanwhile, non-Americans like the German Karl May picked up the genre, went to full novel length, and made it hugely popular and successful in continental Europe from about 1880 on, though they were generally dismissed as trivial by the literary critics of the day. Popularity grew with the publication of Zane Grey's Riders of the Purple Sage in 1912. When pulp magazines exploded in popularity in the 1920s, Western fiction greatly benefited, as did author Max Brand, who excelled at the Western short story. The simultaneous popularity of Western movies in the 1920s also helped the genre. In the 1940s, several seminal Westerns were published, including The Oxbow Incident in 1940 by Walter Van Tilburg Clark, The Big Sky in 1947, and The Way West in 1949 by A. B. Guthrie, Jr., and Shane in 1949 by Jack Schaefer. Many other Western authors gained readership in the 1950s, such as Luke Short, Ray Hogan, and Louis Lamour. The genre peaked around the early 1960s, largely due to the tremendous number of Westerns on television. In the 1970s, the work of Louis L'Amour began to catch hold of most Western readers, and he has tended to dominate the Western reader lists ever since. Readership as a whole began to drop off in the mid to late 1970s, and has reached a new low today, so much so that most bookstores outside of a few Western states only carry a small number of Western fiction books. Western authors have an organization that represents them called the Western Writers of America, who present the annual Golden Spur Awards. Section 4. Western Movies A genre in which description and dialogue are lean and the landscape spectacular is well suited to film. Early westerns were mostly filmed in the studio, like other early Hollywood movies, but when location shooting became more common, producers of westerns used desolate corners of California, Arizona, Utah, Nevada, Colorado, or Wyoming, 
often making the landscape not just a vivid backdrop, but a character in the movie. Productions were also filmed on location at movie ranches. The western genre itself has subgenres, such as the epic western, the shoot 'em up, singing cowboy westerns, and a few comedy westerns. The western reinvented itself in the revisionist western. Cowboys and gunslingers play prominent roles in western movies. Often fights with Indians are depicted, with revisionist westerns giving the natives sympathetic treatment. Other recurring themes of westerns include western treks and groups of bandits terrorizing small towns, such as in The Magnificent Seven. The western film traces its roots back to the 1903's The Great Train Robbery, a silent film directed by Edwin S. Porter and starring Broncho Billy Anderson. The film's popularity opened the door for Anderson to become the screen's first cowboy star, making several hundred western movie shorts. So popular was the genre that he soon had competition in the form of William S. Hart. In the United States, the western has had an extremely rich history that spans many genres including comedy, drama, tragedy, parody, musical, and science fiction. The golden age of the western film is epitomized by the work of two directors, John Ford, who often used John Wayne for lead roles, and Howard Hawks. During the 1960s and 1970s, a revival of the western emerged in Italy with the Spaghetti Westerns, or Italo Westerns. Many of these films are low-budget affairs, shot in locations chosen for cheapness and for similarity of landscape to those of the southwestern United States, for example, the Spanish desert region of Almeria. Spaghetti westerns were characterized by the presence of more action and violence than the Hollywood westerns. But the best of the genre, notably the films directed by Sergio Leone, have a parodic dimension which gave them a different tone than the Hollywood westerns. For example, the strange opening scene of Once Upon a Time in the West, which was a reversal of Fred Zinnemann's High Noon opening scene. Clint Eastwood became famous by starring in spaghetti westerns, although they were also to provide a showcase for such other considerable talents as Lee Van Cleef, James Coburn, Terence Hill, Klaus Kinski, and Henry Fonda. Revisionist is a term used in genre studies to describe films that change traditional elements of a genre. After the early 1960s, many American filmmakers began to question and change many traditional elements of westerns. One major change was in the increasingly positive reception of Native Americans, who had been treated as savages in early films. Audiences began to question the simple hero versus villain dualism and the morality of using violence to test one's character or to prove oneself right. Some recent westerns give women more powerful roles. Contemporary westerns, as the name implies, are films that have contemporary American settings, but nevertheless utilize Old West themes and motifs, such as a rebellious anti-hero, open plains and landscapes, and climactic gunfights. For the most part, they still take place in the American West, and reveal the progression of the Old West mentality into the late 20th century. Examples include John Sayles' Lone Star in 1996, Clint Eastwood's A Perfect World in 1993, Tommy Lee Jones' The Three Burials of Melchiades Estrada in 2005, Robert Rodriguez's Once Upon a Time in Mexico in 2003, and HBO's Deadwood TV series, which ran from 2004 to 2006. In the 1960s, academic and critical attention to cinema as a legitimate art form emerged. With the increased attention, film theory was developed to attempt to understand the significance of film. From this environment, emerged in conjunction with the literary movement, an enclave of critical studies called genre studies. This was primarily a semantic and structuralist approach to understanding how similar films convey meaning. Long derided for its simplistic morality, the western film genre came to be seen instead as a series of conventions and codes that acted as shorthand communication methods with the audience. For example, a white hat represents the good guy, a black hat represents the bad guy two people facing each other on a deserted street leads to the expectation of a showdown. Cattlemen are loners, townsfolk and family are community-minded, and so on. All Western films can be read as a series of codes and the variations on those codes. Since the 1970s, the Western genre has been unraveled through a series of films that use the codes, but primarily as a way of undermining them. Little Big Man and Maverick did this through comedy. 
Kevin Costner's Dances with Wolves actually resurrects all the original codes and conventions, but reverses the polarities. The Native Americans are good and the U.S. Cavalry is bad. Clint Eastwood's Unforgiven uses every one of the original conventions, but reverses the outcomes. Instead of dying bravely or stoically, characters whine, cry, and beg. Instead of a good guy saving the day, irredeemable characters execute revenge, and so on. One of the results of genre studies is that some have argued that westerns need not take place in the American West, or even the 19th century, as the codes can be found in other types of movies. For example, a very typical western plot is that an eastern lawman heads west, where he matches wits and trades bullets with a gang of outlaws and thugs, and is aided by a local lawman who is well-meaning but largely ineffective until a critical moment when he redeems himself by saving the hero's life. This description can be used to describe any number of westerns, as well as the action film Die Hard. HUD, starring Paul Newman, and Akira Kurosawa's Shichinin no Samurai, or The Seven Samurai, are other frequently cited examples of movies that don't take place in the American West, but have many themes and characteristics common to westerns. Likewise, it has been pointed out that films set in the old American West may not necessarily be considered westerns. Section 5. Influences on and of the Western Many westerns after 1960 were heavily influenced by the Japanese samurai films of Akira Kurosawa. For instance, The Magnificent Seven was a remake of Kurosawa's Seven Samurai, and both A Fistful of Dollars and Last Man Standing were remakes of Kurosawa's Yojimbo, which itself was reputedly inspired by Red Harvest, an American detective novel by Dashiell Hammett. It should also be noted that Kurosawa himself was heavily influenced from American westerns, especially the works of John Ford. Despite the Cold War, the western was a strong influence on Eastern Bloc cinema, which had its own take on the genre, the so-called Red Western, or Austern. Generally, these took two forms, either straight westerns shot in the Eastern Bloc, or action films involving the Russian Revolution and Civil War, and the Basmachi Rebellion in which Turkic peoples play a role similar to Mexicans in traditional westerns. An offshoot of the western genre is the post-apocalyptic western, in which a future society struggling to rebuild after a major catastrophe is portrayed in a manner very similar to the 19th century frontier. Examples include The Postman and the Mad Max series, and the computer game Fallout. Many elements of space travel series and films borrow extensively from the conventions of the western genre. Peter Hyam's Outland transferred the plot of High Noon to interstellar space. Gene Roddenberry, the creator of the Star Trek series, once described his vision for the show as Wagon Train to the Stars. More recently, the space opera Firefly used an explicitly western theme for its portrayal of frontier worlds. Anime shows like Cowboy Bebop, Trigun, and Outlaw Star have been similar mixes of science fiction and western elements. The science fiction western can be seen as a subgenre of either westerns or science fiction. Elements of western movies can be found also in some movies belonging essentially to other genres. For example, Kelly's Heroes is a war movie, but action and characters are western-like. The British film Zulu, set during the Anglo-Zulu War, has sometimes been compared to a western, even though it is set in South Africa. Stephen King's The Dark Tower is a series of seven books that meshes themes of westerns, high fantasy, science fiction, and horror. The protagonist, Roland Deschain, is a gunslinger whose image and personality are largely inspired by The Man With No Name, from Sergio Leone's films. In addition, the superhero fantasy genre has been described as having been derived from the cowboy hero, only powered up to omnipotence in a primarily urban setting. The western genre has been parodied on a number of occasions, famous examples being Support Your Local Sheriff, Cat Bayou, and Mel Brooks' Blazing Saddles. George Lucas's Star Wars films use many elements of a western, and indeed, Lucas has said he intended for Star Wars to revitalize cinematic mythology, a part the western once held. The Jedi, who take their name from Jedi Geki, are modeled after samurai, showing the influence of Kurosawa. The character Han Solo dressed like an archetypical gunslinger, and the Moss Eisley Cantina is much like an Old West saloon. Section 6, Notable Western Movies The Big Three, often considered the three best westerns ever made, are The Good, the Bad, and the Ugly, 
Once Upon a Time in the West, and High Noon. This article concludes with a quote from Clint Eastwood, a classic actor in westerns. As far as I'm concerned, Americans don't have any original art, except western movies and jazz. For more information on this topic, the English Wikipedia has several articles you may be interested in. For more on spaghetti western movies, see Spaghetti Western. For more on revisionist western movies, see Revisionist Western. For more on television westerns, see Television Westerns and List of TV Westerns. For more on notable western movies, see List of Western Movies. For more on famous western actors, see Famous Actors in Westerns. This concludes this recording of the article Western Genre. This sound file and all text in the article are licensed under the GNU Free Documentation License, available at www.gnu.org slash copyleft slash fdl.html.